This is the generator shelf set up to be weather resistant. I've got a tarp that's been cut into a few pieces and it covers uh, most of the shelving, which are plastic shelving, I'll show in a few moments. And the key to this is that it's a tool-free installation. Everything is being held on by magnets. The top area that houses the fuel tanks has a back to it, whereas the area in back of the generators is open so the exhaust can go through. Each of the generators is being fed by an auxiliary fuel tank. This is a three gallon tank. This is a six and a half gallon tank. There's a quick release on the tank, which goes into a hose, into a primer bulb, which comes around the tank goes into a fuel filter and then into a modified fuel cap. This one I modified the Honda fuel cap, got them connected with fuel quick disconnects. This is the Evinrude style connector. The same goes for both generators and both fuel tanks. The reason I chose one six gallon and one three gallon tank is to have one be a little more portable in case we ran into a problem and a neighbor ran into a problem in the event that we decided to power our house just by one generator it would be nice to take the second generator and its fuel tank a lighter weight fuel tank and just bring it over to a neighbor's house and we've done that before let's fire up the generators and see what they sound like I'm about seven feet away eight feet away both of the generators have already been started so there's no need to choke them I just have to turn on the on off switch and pull it once. Now the two generators are running. They're both running on eco mode and there's no drain on them at the moment because we've still got utility power to the house. I'll go inside shortly and turn off the power. Here you can see the two generators. They're identical Honda EU2000 I generators, each providing 1600 watts rated and 2000 watts peak power. They're connected by a series of uh, cables, banana plug cables on each generator. The banana plugs go from one generator into the other generator, then up into the Gentran parallel connector kit out through a 30 amp plug, down to a wire, and then gets connected into a Gentran power inlet box. Then I can put the weatherproof covers back on. I've added two pieces of vinyl flashing on the top shelf. This serves as a roof to keep the weather off of it. And it also serves as a shelf to put extra fuel tanks on top. And I can use a siphon or a jiggle siphon to refuel from these tanks into the auxiliary tanks. And this is pretty much the complete setup configured to run during a storm. On the other side of the wall from the inlet box, I've got a gem box with a duplex outlet and this just gives me a place to plug in an extension cord before it goes into the main panel and we also have um, a little light here which will light the stairway this is being fed purely by generator power this continues from here down into the basement the power comes into the basement through 10 gauge wiring and terminates in a cable and when I plug this in you'll see that this light here for generator will come on 
this is showing that the transfer switch is now getting power from the utility, from the generator, and from a UPS. The UPS is an APC XS1500, which is 1500 volt amps or about 860 watts. The UPS, the uninterruptible power supply, is being charged by the convenience outlet. And then there's an output going back from the UPS back into the panel, so it acts as a third power source. This is an APC UTS6H, which means that it uses a standard L5R plug and has six 120 volt circuits. I've labeled each one of the circuits one through six so that we have a, at a glance can tell that the first one is the bedroom, the second one is the furnace, the third one is the office computers, the living room, then the living room TV, the refrigerator in the kitchen, and the microwave. You can check circuit status by pressing these buttons here and cycle through. So it's showing right now that circuit one, it sources utility, it's only drawing three amps and uh, 328 watts. Because the utility service is on, it shows that the utility is powering load. And of those six circuits, I've got a total of, oh, about uh, 1,200 watts being drawn right now. I've got a little LED light here, flexible LED light, that I can turn on. And it's powered off of the convenience inlet, so uh, I'll have a little bit of light in here if we need it. And now for the test, we're going to turn off the circuit breakers, the main circuit breaker to the house. And the first thing that should happen is the UPS should kick in. It's powering only one of the circuits, a circuit that I had marked as uninterruptible. The UPS was powering that one circuit for the few seconds until the transfer was made. The room lights are out, and now it says that the backup is powering the load. The backup in this case being the generator. So we can see that UTS-6H backup powering load, if I look at, this, at the circuit, it says that circuit one source is the generator, it's drawing 150 watts. Two is the generator. Three is the generator. And the last thing to do is to turn on the power again and make sure everything goes back to normal. Now Josh is throwing the switch, the main power switch. Room lights come back on. The little green light should come on, showing that utility power has been restored. It temporarily went over to UPS power, and then it switched over to utility power entirely. So far, so good. And if we're really lucky, we'll never have to use it.